can Ohio State beat Alabama or Georgia or other top 10 teams? Well, I think we're talking about two different situations there. First and foremost, uh, I think the three, and I usually wouldn't make this statement this early in the season, but I do think what we, most of us, assumed preseason Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia being separate from the rest of the country, I think it's playing itself out. And then trying to figure out the next 10 or 15, I think they can all knock each other off depending on the matchups. And maybe you could extend that out beyond 10 or 15 teams past that. So I know this is way too early, but whoever, yeah, the one who wants to tackle the Ohio State matchup against Alabama and Georgia. Well, there are a dearth of teams. You know, you get beyond those first three and it's a real dearth, I think, of teams. Uh I mean, when you're having to hunt and put USC in the top 10 after they barely won at Oregon State and Penn State, is, you know, is in the top 10 and whatever, or right outside the top 10, and you're really scratching to find teams to fill it out, I think, you know, you get beyond those first three, it is a little bit of a, of a crapshoot who's going to show up. Even Clemson, I give Clemson grudgingly a little bit of credit for winning that game in overtime on the road could have very easily just given in and lost to Wake Forest uh, any number of ways. But uh, DJ kept bringing them back, kept bringing them back, and, uh, you know, they pulled it out. Um, as far as playing Alabama and Georgia, um, I think Ohio State matches up pretty well with either one of them right now. We've seen Georgia look dominant in their one, you know, talent equated game. I mean, I guess South Carolina quasi – Talent, talent equated game, but what was it? Uh, Oregon, they ran off the field in the first game of the season. Then they kind of played with their food against uh, Sanford and uh, Kent State here, a couple of the lesser opponents. So, you know, we haven't seen Ohio State really do that yet. So, you know, does, does comparing what Ohio State did to Toledo to what Georgia did to Kent really matter? Probably not. Um, you know, I want to see what they do when they play, you know, the tougher teams on their schedule as they get into it. Uh, Alabama, man, um, one point win at Texas and have looked really good otherwise. I mean, they beat up on Vanderbilt, which, you know, kind of the same thing as Ohio State beating up on Toledo. Uh, I don't know. I guess we still need to know more. And Alabama is going to be tested. They've got some tough games coming up, so. Uh, they play Tennessee at some point, which, again, Tennessee is one of those teams that's kind of falling upward, you know, <laughs> not not really playing like a top five team, but being ranked kind of like a top five team right now. So, you know, we'll we'll see uh, here in a few weeks when it it all kind of shakes out there. There might be a two loss team that makes the playoff this year. I don't know. It, there's a lot of teams beating one another and it's uh, it, it's going to get real crazy here. There's five games this week matching ranked teams and you know we'll see who can who can survive that what if uh tennessee's only losses this year are to alabama once at once in a couple of weeks and then once in the sec title game and they look good against everybody else because yeah, right now Al alabama's next three games will dictate their season and it's not like it's a murderer's row it's at arkansas which could be a three-quarter game maybe right. i mean and then they're they're at home against Texas A and M, which I, I don't know why Texas A and M is still ranked seventeenth in the nation, but they are. And then they're at Tennessee, and yeah, that then they've got nothing until like at LSU is nothing really, in my opinion. At Mississippi State or at, at Ole Miss is whatever. So these next three games, they'll be able to rebuild any uh, lost luster to try to get back into that that number one ranking and jo jo jostle back and jockey back and forth with Georgia for that number one while Ohio State just stays at three because they can't possibly pass an SEC team while they're beating other SEC teams. Just means more. It does. At least we know that. To your point, Steve, maybe Clemson, USC, and Oklahoma were the candidates coming into last weekend to see, okay, can any one of those three, they look like maybe the three best candidates to join the other three, but then Oklahoma – loses their annual game against Kansas State. Clemson struggles and basically needs to find what's going on in their secondary, and even their their great defensive line was neutralized in that game, giving up 45 points, and USC escapes in a game where they were given four interceptions. 
mm. on the road. So, yeah, I don't know if anybody's really that good aside from those three. It's, uh, you know, does Oklahoma State, they play Baylor this week. Does the winner of that game step up? Penn State's out there. NC State taking on Clemson this Saturday night. That's going to divide that conference and, and distinguish somebody as the best. And, uh, yeah, Tennessee well, intrigues me. Yeah, and but you look at USC, like, is, is are they basically a one-game season at this point? They're at Utah in the middle of October. And then, you know, at UCLA towards the end of the season and, and home against Notre Dame, that's, that's basically it. And, you know, well, maybe they start to look ahead and get tripped up at home against Washington State, but I, I don't see it. Caleb Williams played poorly and then still did enough to win. I just think they have too much offense right now for everybody else. And But then, you know, what happens in the Pac-12 championship game? But, uh, you know, what happens if Penn State and Michigan, their only losses are to Ohio State? Like one of those two teams, their only losses to Ohio State. And you're just going to have a bunch of the same bunch of – because everybody is outside of the top three. Everybody can just kind of looks the same. And so I think it's going to come down to, um, you know, the, the losses, the – and as we know, losing to Alabama is, good, is as good as beating a Penn State or a Michigan. You know, we know that. So it's uh, that's uh, a quality win. It, it's it is. Uh, it's it's better than anybody else is doing, yeah. as long as it's close. And you know, you only have to be a, only have to lose close to them once because that's the one that people will remember. That's the one that counts. That's the one you turn in. Like the outlier is the the big loss. The one that you turn in to the committee is the the close one. And so it'll be interesting to see how these all of these teams that are looking the same are, are, are all shake out. And I will I will not be surprised, as I've said before, if there's a third SEC team trying to get in there and uh, maybe finding a way to do it. <sighs> that was Ohio State's issue in 2017 and 18. They had to hand in the egregious loss. They weren't allowed to hand in all those top 15 wins. Well, it's the different. SEC Invitational. On ESPN, but they don't look at conferences. The committee, no. The dog but they sure have a lot of. Uh, they always have a, a, a random SEC teams ranked in the top twenty-five towards the bottom where nobody is looking, so that they can. Well, Alabama has all of these ranked wins. It's like yes, because you have four loss Arkansas at twenty-five. Why? So that we could say Alabama has all of these great ranked wins. There was the year they played Colorado State, and they snuck them in at 25, like at the end of the year, too. Well, here, here, here they are. They're right here. Mm -hmm. They're right here, you know. <clears throat> well, that's because Arkansas lost to all ranked teams. So you get to keep them in. It, there's always justification, and it's always so funny listening to them each week change their reasoning for stuff on what they do. And you just – they, they they should just go to well we just we wanted to do it this way that why, why do you have this team here that's what we wanted that's what we saw you're just trying to make me angry is all you're doing right now I'm just sitting here my legs shaking I'm just like I and the best part is I can't wait until we start having to do our Tuesday shows mm -hmm. from the committee and grapevine as they sit there and just make this stuff up as they go along and you know. So on and so forth. It's uh, like recapping fan fiction, basically. Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah, we're only a few weeks away from those Tuesday recaps. Very nice. Yes, those will be fun.